What's up? It's your boy Shelly and I just jumped off the porch with Dirty Glove Bastard. My boy, it's been a long time coming. All right, today we got Shelly, formerly known as Drum, jumping off the porch with us today. What's going on, man? How you feeling today, gang? I'm feeling good, feeling blessed. For sure. Yeah, man. Absolutely. It's an absolute pleasure to have you on the porch with us today, gang. Man, thank you very much, man. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm in the city. Yeah. It's only right. You know what I'm saying? It's the hottest blog shit in the city. You know what I mean? Sure. Got to make sure I tapped in. Shout out to my dog, man. So what you out here working on in the city in Atlanta? Well, actually, uh, I moved here the top of the year. You know what I'm saying? Time fly, then It's about to be a year. But, um, you know, uh, just really, like, getting cemented out here and like like really uh building up the wave and in, in, in general you know i have my, my street team got my bros with me you know what i'm saying waiver and um really just here to tackle all of this shit you know what i'm saying continue on you know music the brands we'll get into it though you straight know like that so tell us man how was it being born in germany bro i couldn't even of course you can't tell. <laughs> Bro, I couldn't tell you. No, 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 no ball cap. Yeah. For real, for real. Like, I was born there. Uh, you know, my mother was in the military yeah. uh, when she had me uh, stationed in Germany. And by the time, I think she said I was like, well, like six months or whatever, we was back in the States. So, yeah. you know. Shout out to that fun fact, but I really don't got no 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 German twist for y'all. You know what I'm saying? I just happen to drop drop into the world out there. You know for I mean? sure. So when would you say your family migrated to Hampton, oh, Virginia? Man. Okay, so all of my family is from uh, Hampton, Virginia. You know what I'm saying? Like the Massenburgs, uh, my grandma and gramps. You know I'm saying all of my uncles, aunts. All, you know. And basically, I would go there every summer, you know, uh, up until I was seven years old. And that's when we uh, permanently moved out there. I was staying with my grandma and gramps for a while. And um, yeah, I mean, it's, that's, that's, it's that's about it, you know what I'm yeah. saying? That's, that's about it. Straight like that. So to be specific, Hampton, Virginia is not a part of the DMV. No. So you so, get that confused often? Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, and, you know, it's no slight, you know, much love to the DMV. You know, uh, man, I, I get mad love out there. Uh, but when you are from the area, like, like, you know, you know that there's specifics. I'm from the 757. You know, that's the seven cities. Um, I'm from the Peninsula District. That's uh, Hampton, New News. Mm -hmm. And then you got uh, the South Side, which is uh, Suffolk. Portsmouth, Chesapeake, and Norfolk and Virginia, you know, the, uh, Norfolk and Virginia Beach, rather. You know what I'm saying? Those are seven cities, that's 757. It's about like three and a half hours away from the DC area, the DMV area, you know. Uh, as much love as I have for them, you know, I gotta rep exactly where I'm from, you know what I'm saying? Stay like that. Straight up. So how would you describe your childhood coming up out there? It was cool, you know what I'm saying? like. I will always say it like this. It was like, I was in a good house, household, you know, like, and, you know, you go outside and, and it's cool, but it was always in one of those areas, you know what I'm saying? Like, like, but I was good at, you know, it's good in the house, you know what I'm saying? And then when you know everybody, you know, everything cool, you know what I'm saying? Like, I was, you know what I'm saying, in the, into the books, you know what I'm saying, A's and B's, you know what I'm yeah. saying, I was singing all the time, I'd be at the assembly singing, like, they'd be like, yo, yeah, Shelly with the big lips, man, yeah, man, you be singing, you know what I'm saying, da, yeah. da, da. always singing, you know what I'm saying, always singing, so, I mean, that was about that, I mean, for the most part, you know what I'm saying, That's I just, lit. you know what I mean, just did my little thing, you know what I'm saying, so, it felt good, the fact that um, people from back home, you know, seeing me, you know, if they went to school with me and shit, damn, I remember you was, you know what I'm saying? You know, it's just full circle. That's the real one. Yeah. So where would you say your passion for music came from? I feel like ever since I was born, it was on me. Like, I don't remember, I don't remember like, oh, I want to do this or anything like that. Like, ever since I could think a thought, I was singing. 
Like, like it's a story. My mother said when I was like two years old, I was sitting on her knee and she was at the piano and um, like, like it's like this old little piano that was in the dining room at my um, grandma and grandma's house. And she would just sit there and she said, boom, I like the key go dun. And she said, I said, duh. Like, like, like imitating the notes, she was mm-hmm. like, dun, dun. And, and like all the way up and then like the joke is, she hit the last key and was like, and I was like, Bing. <laughs> and shit like that, you know what I mean? And I, I, I promised to God, like bro, ever since I could remember, I was into music, I was singing, and I, I feel like God put it in me. For sure. Not on me. So when would you say you jumped off the porch? As soon as uh, I went to the church choir and they said, does somebody want to try out for this solo? I do. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm never scared. I, I wanted to sing. I, I, I feel the most powerful with the microphone in my hand, just singing out and, 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 and people receiving it. You know what I'm saying? So. I feel like growing up, uh, singing in church, growing up, I, I mean, shit, even when I got out of like middle school, uh, shout out to uh, my, my old music teacher from middle school, Miss, Miss Lucinda McDonald. You know, she, she's an amazing woman. She actually had, uh, started a community youth choir called Soul Direction. Like uh, when I left from Spratly Middle School, I was devastated. I'm like, damn, we, she was like, look, just, just be in this youth choir. and. Um, like then, like like that helped. We were traveling and stuff like that, you know, singing. I was singing solos and stuff like that. It just any chance that I could make music, I'd make it, you know. And I, I never, I never forget those times. And I feel like those moments is what shaped me, you know, For sure. and, and put real, real, real key people around me in my life to this day too. For sure. For real. So, at what age did you say you decided to take music serious full time? Like on, on this platform, like, like, you know, like on some like drum, you know, whatever, that, that moment was 2013. See, I was making music and recording this shit like that ever since, you know, uh, senior year of high school, like we'd be at this booth in the mall. Sometimes in the malls they had like a booth. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We used to be in that bitch for whatever, but really just freestyle battling outside, like niggas walk by, double take, whatever, whatever, real, real, yeah. real teenager shit. Yeah. And, you know, I went through a lot of things, a lot of ups and downs. I was a cameraman out in my way. I was like, really like, like one of the most lit cameramen for real, for real, doing them little chopped up videos. I get it back to them quick and shit. Mm-hmm. Like, I was just like, you know, quick on the hand. I felt like that Sony Vegas Pro was kind of like Fruity Loops and I figured it or whatever. Yeah. And I made a little, little loop for it. Some shit, you know, that, that, that shit like, would kind of get in the way when, when niggas was broke, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I'm saying? In and out of jobs, ain't had no job. I had that, so that was kind of cool. And then that shit shut, shut down, whatever, whatever. I'm like, man, what the fuck? Like, I felt like it was a sign to go hard on my music. The year was 2013, and, um, damn, like, I really buckled down. I was just on the edge of the bed, on a $100 mic, on a computer, just going in. I linked with my boy Gabe at the end of that year. We went all the way in 2014, one epic summer, cha-cha the whole everything on a hundred dollar mic, all the way to you know. That's what I mean? cold. That's yeah. real cold. It was a lot of call centers in between that epic summer. Yeah, though. on God, <laughs> like God damn. Why did you pick up on that hustle, like working call center moves, man? Just gift the gap. Yeah. I, you know, I. <laughs> yeah. I, I I can articulate myself. I can let you know my thoughts. I can let you know what your balance is. Yeah. And I can hear you talk down on me, disrespect me. You're just angry because you put yourself in a situation where you can't pay your bills. Yeah. And that's fine. <laughs> you know, it's not gonna break my day. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you know, so that was kind of cool. And, and my mother, man, she was, she was really heavy into that too. So she like grandmothered me in, no, no bullshit. Two of those jobs, the first one was PRA, I, right fresh out of high school, I decided to take a year off from going to college, got a job, you know, she got me in there, and then, well, like, a few years later, I, I did call center shit at Bank of America. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? She blessed me in, too. But shit, I, I worked at the shipyard, I worked, you know what I'm saying, like, all types of oddball jobs. It was a I lot of hustles. Brush and roll painting and yeah. shit with the Migos, and Trey Keo, home. Trey Keo, home. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I had to Trey Keo. That's real though. Yeah, I man, but like. I also remember it was a video. I don't remember what the song was. It was like a visual of you and your mother. 
and it was like a reenaction of her like kicking you out the house, like get the off the your money ass. Video. Yeah. The money video. The money video. Was that like a real situation? Yeah, yeah that, that was that was that was what what life was like. Because yeah. I mean, my mother, she you know she made music. She an amazing singer. Had, had to, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I know it came straight from her. Mm -hmm. And her thing was, she never wanted me to uh, stop pursuing my dreams and shit, but she just didn't like the fact that I didn't have enough hustle to get, to, to get some money to support my dream. Like, it's like shit. But in my mind, I'm like, I got the microphone. I got the program to load it up. I be making the beats. I'm fucking with my nigga Gabe. Yeah. We, we, we clashing on this shit. It's going up. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But I saw a past that. It's like, but nah, you, you know what I'm saying? It's like, but damn, nigga, like, you ain't, you ain't putting nothing in this goddamn house. And, For sure. You know? And, and it, all, it all panned out the right way, though. You know what I'm saying? Like, That's I, real. Damn. Back to that one epic summer. So did you predict the success of that project? Did you know, like, okay, this project is going to be the one that changed my life? Yeah, we didn't know how, but it was just like, yo, when we put this out there, when we put this project out there and it finally gets into the world, it's going to spread. Something's going to happen. That's when SoundCloud was like, you know what I mean? Like, like, this was right near the end of the blog era. It was like a real, real, real special time. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, like, um, everything was in transition. Right. And then we had the Cha Cha record that, to be honest, we were holding, we was holding that record hostage at all of the little functions that we threw during that summer. You know what I'm saying? Like we didn't release it until the, the mixtape in September, but the song was conceived in June at my boy Gabe's birthday party. It was so lit. The whole city was up. They was packing out each little event we threw just because they wanted to hear that record and they knew that the only way they could hear it was if they went to one of our parties. Yeah. And that shit was just they added to the excitement and everything was lit. That's real. So when we finally put it out there, we was like, yeah, this shit going, this shit going to snap. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And shout out to my boy, Jacob, Jacob Moore at Pigeons and Planes. Cause somehow or another, he caught it on his SoundCloud. Somebody reposted it. He fell in love and started championing that shit. And within that week of him championing the project, I got my management, which is, uh, it was originally Toon Day, but uh, as we all know, Toon Day, the uh, big boss man over at LVRN. Shout out to LVRN. Family, shout out to the gang, you know what I mean? For sure. And uh, Todd Rubenstein, my first lawyer, very, very solid guy, very successful. They called me within one hour, and, and, and I was like, all right, well, you know, I'm fucking with them. But to this day, and they were already doing business before with another artist. To this day, they said that they didn't contact each other, but they called me within one hour of each other. That's and was, crazy. And I fucked with them for a long way. That's a sign then. Nah, for real. Everything, everything, everything was, everything was aligned. Yeah. So what was your reaction when you seen that Beyonce was giving the record love? Bro, that was, you, you, you gotta understand, if ever in your life you felt like a moment turned your off switch to an on, yeah. that is a moment. I have not received a moment in my life that turned my life from this way to that way in just one post. I tell you, I'm in, I'm in New York City, LES, Orchard Street. We just, it's a regular day. I'm with uh, my, my guy, Nigel. He, he was co-managing me at the time, you know what I'm saying? Big brother, you know what I mean? He's, He's chastising me about something. You know, drawing, da da da. All of a sudden, something goes off on his phone. He said, uh, oh, fuck that, fuck that, <laughs> fuck that, it's lit. Beyonce just posted a video of her dancing a cha cha. I'm like, get the fuck out of here. That's I look crazy. at my phone, I just lose it. I got 2%. I hurry up, I repost the shit or whatever. I put Beyonce likes the cha cha, post it, my phone dies. I stand up on the bench right there in the middle of the street, just start pointing at random people. Hey, Beyonce likes the cha-cha. Beyonce likes the cha-cha. <laughs> this white nigga looked like Richard Gere. I said, Richard Gere, Beyonce <laughs> likes the cha-cha. You, like, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, it's fucking up. Yeah. Bro, I took the pussy bus from New York back to motherfucking uh, Virginia. The pussy bus, the China bus. It, I was gonna it, say, it, yeah. It's, it's, it got that smell in the back. Oh, okay. You know what the fuck I'm talking okay. about. 
You know what I'm saying? The yeah. pussy bus. Yeah. But that shit is a good way to spend thirty dollars and get from top to bottom. <laughs> if you know what I'm saying. You, 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 you know what I'm saying? So. <laughs> yeah, fuck it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We was really on the grind. I had nothing. Yeah. You know what I mean? And um when I got back to Virginia, everything fucking changed. Like we had our own scene cultivated on the other side of Granby Street in the arts district. You know, uh, me and my boy Gabe, you know what I'm saying, Rebel E, the whole hipster movement, you know what I'm saying? Like, it was people that usually wasn't opening the doors to black people out where I'm from that started to because it's like, oh, they kind of got a different look. Yeah. And we started turning that shit up. But it was over there in the arts district. On the other side, once you cross Brambleton, on the other side, you know, that's 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 where the you know what I mean, that's that that's that's where the niggas at, you know what I mean? And and as much love, you know what I'm saying, as I already was, like, you know what I'm saying, I knew that the music, my my wave was in the arts district. After that Beyonce post, when I got back, we went to uh uh, uh like it, it was like a big ass of, event at the um Holiday Inn ballroom and shit, bro. Like like straight up like like NBA like, no, it was it was like the Seahawks was there, cause uh, Cam Chancellor, you know what I'm saying? Like, like star, st star nigga like from the Seahawks, you know what I'm saying? Like, he had fucking, you know, it, it was one of those types of events, you know what I'm saying? And everybody was just, it was just instantaneous, yo. You know, you know what I'm saying? My gear is in, and I, now I'm in the in crowd, and all the wavy light skinned girls is loving me now. Yeah. <laughs> Literally. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was all the way up. Yeah. And um, I never forget that moment. And um, man, yo, you have no idea. Like, like Beyonce blessed my situation further, e even further. You know what I'm saying? I got the chance to, to meet with her, to, to, to work with her. She put me on with, 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 with People that, you know, like, like, I mean, like, she told Diplo, you have to work with Drum. He got a hell of a pen. He's a hell of a writer. She told Mike Will, you know what I'm saying? Friends to this day, good, good, good ass connects. Like, bro, man, thank you so much, Queen. Like, you have no idea. Forever grateful. Yeah, man. That's real. Shout out Beyonce, man. Nah, it ain't no meaning too often, you know, we get to shout out Beyonce, but shout out Beyonce. Nah, nah. Nah, for real. So right after that, we step into a big baby drum, that era. How did you feel the love when it came to putting together that project, man? That was amazing because almost the whole entirety of that was um, recorded at my boy Yeti's um, studio. Now, Yeti Beats, he's, he's actually, um, what, what, what? Uh, He's the label owner, like he signed Doja Cat, like, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? They're all the way up and up and up, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? But like back in 2015, 2016, I was recording at his spot, like on um, Santa Monica and El Centro, you know what I'm saying? Like it was just, it felt like homely vibes, like, you know what I'm saying? Fire ass equipment, you know what I'm saying? But like just a lot of chill space. It felt like you just extended at somebody's crib or some shit, like it was just real fire. Yeah. Dope vibes and, the creation process was just like real organic and just, you know, all in the room type time, you know what I'm saying? I think that when the music came out and the selling of the music and the touring and going out, like that was like all like star studying and sh -sh 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 -sh. But like the creation process was real, real humble. Like we was just in that bitch cooking from the soul. That's real. What would you say was the blueprint for that project? Like, what was the goal for the project? To show these niggas exactly what I could do. I was just going to say that. Yeah. Past what, 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 what you would see on the mainstream, like from single at a time, like what you got. Like, I wanted to give you the full scope of my artistry. And even though I feel like in time, like, like time passed and, you know, uh, the rec, like broccoli, you know what I'm saying, cash machine, like that sound overpowered everything else. But I, I felt like it was going to like lead you in, you know, those records going to lead you in and then you see everything. But, you know, you learn with that. 
and I never take that experience away. And I feel like I put out like a iconic ass album. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. For sure, definitely an iconic ass album, man. I I definitely feel like that project showed it's different levels to artistry. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Like it was just a different type of feel and vibe. You know what I mean? Thank on you, the man. R and B tip, on the hip hop tip, like it was well meshed, but it was also creative at the same time. So talk to us about Wi-Fi featuring Erica Badu, man. Oh man, one of the standouts from the album, man. Man, shout out to Queen Badu, man. Like for real, like just. You know what I'm saying? Like, literally one of my most favorite people, you know what I'm saying? I love her to death. Like, we got so much shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, so many records, but that, that record in particular, I mean, I, I was in this one session and it was like, like, like the beat was just going or whatever. And then I, all of a sudden, I was just like, um, I, I wanted the Wi-Fi so I could hook it up. But I was like, do you got Wi-Fi? Like, you know what I'm saying? And like, they just start laughing. And I just started going in off that or yeah. whatever. So I was sitting on like a, like that whole take that you hear, that was one take, my, my part. The first shit was just like me, me going in or whatever outside of like the background. Yeah, yeah I, I did that shit in one take, you know what I'm saying? And, um, I was sitting on that reference for a minute, and then I was just thinking, like, damn, like, I wonder if Queen would like, 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 fuck with this. And I sent it to her. She was like, hell yeah, she'll do it. You know what I mean, she, she let me write it out. Like, you know what I'm saying, like that. Her verse, I wrote that. You know what I'm saying, hard. like, bro, like, the fact that she even gave me that, that, that power and that comfortability. You know, it's just. It was just amazing, man. Like, like you would think that we were standing side by side singing that, but we just already like, like just connect musically, like, like see eye to eye. So crazy that, you know, when she laid her part and then I laid it, like we just flowed it in like that, man. And I swear, yo, it, it just be making me feel like, like, bro, like, what, like you know what I'm saying, like, do you know what? Yeah. What we, you know what I'm that was a surreal moment. Yeah, you know I mean, that's big Badu. You know what I'm saying? So. Yeah, the queen. For sure. So how is your relationship today? I mean, I still love her to this day. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? The love is, the love is always 100%. For sure. You know what I'm saying? Damn right. For sure. And I know it's another R&B superstar that we see you collaborate with oftentimes, SZA. So talk about Caretaker, man. One of the most coldest records that probably came out in the past five, ten years, man. Hey, yo, man. Thank you, bro. Appreciate that. For sure. So that was a record that that was that was like a one take thing. I, I had um I originally got sent the beat by Nate Fox from the Social Experiment. And I had did this show. This was in like November of 2014, like right after the blogs and all this shit or whatever. We did a show and um it was like it was, it was really like one of those moments like, damn, it's, it's so lit. So I had an ex, ex that mattered, you know what I'm saying? Uh, Tatiana, she um, was right there in the front with my mother singing all of my words like I was already selling out, you know, shows and shit. And it just really made me feel like, damn, like, after, even though, you know, the, the love was like, you know, love for you rather than in, in love, it's like, I would never, you know, I was like, man, like, yo, I, I got you. You know what I'm saying? And I heard that beat and I was just sitting on it and I thought about it and I, I just loaded it up, did one take. I take care of you, even if you got a man now. You know what I mean? Like, and, and just, just, just went in. I sent that shit to Nate. He went bonkers. And um, Donnie Trump had a project called Surf. And they put, I was like one of the only niggas like with his own song up there that wasn't a part of the collective. And I'm not gonna hold you. I thought that that record, I thought that that version of Caretaker wouldn't be as overpowered. Like I don't even think nobody even knows about that version. And um, you know, it, it was one of those gems and you know, like, like if you know, you know, and yeah. everybody was fucking with it. And I saw SZA, me, me and her, like, 
we started uh, like linking in the studio and shit like that around uh, the spring of 2015. And um, I had a show in New York and I was like, yo, you gonna be out here? Well, you know, she out here. I'm like, yo, would you please sing Caretaker with me or whatever? And she was like, what the fuck? Like, like you know what I'm saying? So it was that baby's all right. And that's how it started. It was just like, I just had her come out there like, and it, it went so off. It went crazy, it, like electric. So I'm just like, man, like everybody's just tripping off that shit. So um, fast forward into like the fall of that time and like, we're like, yo, you know, what if, what if, what if we got Scissor to, you know, jump on the caretaker and do the part, you know what I'm saying? Send it to her, she sent it back. The rest is history, like, and I was just like, no, I'm gonna just do a different type of verse. Yeah. So that's how, that, that's why I say extended version. That's a fun fact. That's hard though. And, and I mean, that record right there, like really was uh, the catalyst for people that are in the know to say, yo, he, he be singing. Like, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. he, he, you know what I'm saying? Up. The fuck, like this R&B shit didn't come out of nowhere. Yeah. He been on that, you know what I mean? That's the real one. So, you know, and shout out SZA, man. Like, you know what I mean? That's the sis forever, you know what I'm saying? So. For real. So what made you seek out Yachty for the Broccoli record, man? And did you anticipate that that record would be as big as it became? Nah, bro. <laughs> like this, how this shit went down. Um, I was all right. So Rick Rubin, that's that's like 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 the big big homie, bro. Like like he really really uh is a is a huge piece of why I'm even able to be up and at him with this shit. You know what I'm saying like I ain't gonna hold you. Like enough said with that. Um at uh, Shangri-La and like I got like a, a retreat there we're just working on stuff and he comes and he asks me Rick and he's like um you know I said um uh I hear little Yachty's in town I'm gonna have him come through you know I'm like oh yeah bet bet you know I'm I, I be real hip on shit or whatever so I was already in tune I'm like damn okay so they come through it's him coach like 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 a lot a lot of folks you know what I'm saying like they team and you know, we see each other, we play each other some musical or whatever, but it was more so like just cordial. You know what I'm saying? Then uh, my boy Haji, Haji Films, like, he, you know, he did a lot of, you know, a lot of video work, you know, with, with niggas. And then I seen that he was doing shit with Yachty. So I'm like, oh, yo, like, like, yo, like, you know what I'm saying? I met, I, I met Yachty, bro, like, yo, like, tell him what's up, daddy. He's like, yeah, that's my man, it's all right. You know what I'm saying? So. It was really through Haji, like I got his line and shit, like, like you know what I'm saying? Like, and then uh, I just saw that he was in LA one day, whatever, whatever. I'm like, yo, pull up to the stew or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Like, he was like, all right, bet. Him and uh, Perry came through or whatever, whatever. And we was just sitting in that bitch, you know, just, you know, like, like going through, like, like the beat. It was just a don't, 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 with yeah. the beat, boom, boom, boom. And they was just sitting around, you know, and I swear for maybe about like, 15, 20, 30 minutes just sitting around, right? And I'm like, yo, it needs, it needs something else. That is, I, I said, yo, I said, Roger, Roger should hide. Like, you know what I'm saying? Cold this keyboard is out, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, this is early days, early, early. He'll tell you. I said, yo, give me like, 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 like a flute, like, like a flute, like, like, uh, uh, like black boy, white boy swag era, right? You know what I'm saying? I said, and, and give me a, you know what I'm saying? And, and the chemistry that me and this man have on many records, but this one alone, it's like he hears it, and it is from my mouth, he hears it to his fingers, and he, and he played. And bro, yeah. and that shit is what got everybody, all right, all right, boom, now we got us something. Yeah. Everybody hyping shit. You know what I'm saying? Uh, two of my homegirls at the time, they, 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 they stepped in. They, they, were, they were gone like that. Like they were there earlier in the day and they just came <laughs> out of nowhere. Niggas, niggas got right, you know what I'm saying? I saw niggas start writing. I think low key, that's where that, um, hey, little mama, would you like to be my sunshine? Like, you know what I'm yeah. saying? 
Shorty was type type flying, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, and I'm like, yo, everything just, just worked in together. I'm like, yo, this shit is so fucking it. Yeah. So I'm like, all right, bet I'm about to just go in. You know what I'm saying? I, I ain't know, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, they played the beat. Ain't no, like, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, just instantly. Yeah. And then I, in the middle of the party, bitch, get off of me. And one take, each of the, each of the song, Cha Cha was one take. This one take, that whole hook was one take. And then we just sitting in that bitch. And, and, and the day done went by so much, I was like, man, I'm gonna write my verse tomorrow. Came back the next day, wrote the verse out, pieced the record together, we had the record. I'm thinking this shit gonna be cool for SoundCloud. On some like, yeah. That's what I discovered, for that was culture, some crazy shit. For the That's culture, what, yeah, like, like for the culture, you know what I'm saying? But then it was a publishing war between management and producers involved and not involved who got wedged involved. A real all out pub war for a record that I'm like, I thought it was just gonna be cool for a SoundCloud. Niggas already knew. The, the business mind, they already knew. You know what I'm saying? We ain't even gonna get into all of that. Yeah. <laughs> real wicked, nasty, messy, but whatever. It had to be done. The record came out. The rest is history. Crazy. Crazy. That's all we got to say. It's crazy, man. Like, song of the summer. Bro, that song defined that era of life. Yeah. 2016. Just, bro, like, like, I feel like if I can put out a record that makes you remember where you were when you heard that, and my job is done. You know what I'm saying? That was a defining record. And I didn't even think it was gonna be as defining as, it, as what it proved to be. That's crazy. That is just so far. But right after that record though, you continuously followed up with like hits like Cast Machine, Q. My favorite slept on record, Crumbs. You know what I'm saying? Hey, like, my nigga. Bro. So right after the success of Massive Record Broccoli, right, did you feel any pressure to follow up? Now, I didn't feel no pressure in regards of the music being good. I think the, the intention of the records was the pressure point. Um, in 2017, I was, I was in a studio house for a few months, and it was like doing wild shit, being wild, like, like um, you know, just, just being turned, like, like that, was, that was the whole vibe, like that was the, the vibe that was promoted over there, you know what I'm saying? Like, shit, it was like parties three or four times a week, you know what I'm saying? I had motherfuckers pulling up and shit, but like, I was, I was getting fucked up. I ain't gonna hold you, like, for the most part, you know what I'm saying? But yet and still, like, you know, records were coming at, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, like it, it, just, it just felt like almost like, like, damn, Broccoli, like, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, Broccoli brought so much, so much this and the third, man. Like, you know, like, like, you know, get, you know, keep that energy up. So, Cash Machine and all of that, that's, that's before or yeah. whatever. Like, that's all a part of that era where Big Baby Drum came out. But yeah. records like Crumbs, Il Nana. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Gilligan. These records came out of a... Uh, uh, and now you can't, now when you, when, when you listen, like when you hear me say it, it kind of makes sense. It do feel a little, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, like, like a little agenda you know what I'm saying? And, and that's just me critiquing my shit, you know what I'm saying? Being transparent, you know what I'm saying? Like, niggas gotta hear this, you know what I'm saying? I felt like those records, as fire as they were, they were a bit much, like, uh, reached for. Maybe not a reach because I can't make a bad song. I I'm going to call a spade a spade. Yeah. I'm not putting out a bad song. Yeah. It's not going to happen. But as far as the intention, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, and then that bravado, that braggadocious, it just kind of gets a bit, like, okay. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, especially with me and how I do it, like, I just be trying to keep shit a, a band at all times. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, I, I I kept it real in all of the lyrics and shit, but it's just like, what's your reason of telling us 
telling us this? You know what yeah. I mean? Why are you telling us this? Yeah. Did you feel like Crohn's would be the next one? I just knew it. I, bro, I ain't gonna hold y'all. I felt that shit was finna be it, though. I thought I I knew Crohn's was finna be the. I'm like, ah, oh, this nigga just keep doing it. Like, so like, I never really, I never really had any intentions. Like, like, cause I felt like broccoli was so fucking uh, out of here of a record that it's like, yo, like, there's no. I didn't feel like it's no topping or anything like that. It's just, just consistently giving, giving what 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 is being accepted at this point. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, you know, like just running along with it or whatever. But what I came to find out is, is as much as these records were good and, and some people's like, like, you know, they fucking with it. Like, you know, I, I, I like to play this record and listen to it. It just didn't have that effect, that effect, that magnetism that um, Broccoli had, you know what I'm saying? Like, and it, and it wasn't one of those things that it felt like, oh, it held it over. It was just like, oh, a try. Like, like you know, you're throwing them out there. You know what I'm saying? Lucy's. Yeah. But you ended up getting Cardi B on cute. Oh, that was fire. Man. That was crazy. Yo, shout out to Cardi B for that. Like, I don't even know. Like, like, niggas was sitting on that fucking verse for a long ass time. I didn't even know. My management didn't even like, like, nobody played it for me because, uh, I thought that I guess they thought that I wouldn't like it or some shit like that. I'm like, bro, when I heard that that shit was the most fire shit, I said, bro, this what the fuck? It's up. Fun fact, Charlie Wilson got on 100 percent No. I wrote I wrote a motherfucking verse for him. He sang it, bro. One of the illest sessions I ever had, man. You know what I'm saying? Crazy. Nigga, legend, motherfucking legend. I I you know what I'm saying? That's only one frisbee I'm gonna give you. You know what I'm yeah. saying? I just, you know what I'm saying? I just got a little, yeah, 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 yeah. Nah, for sure. But nah, that's the real one. Man, where eating it at, man? In it at the crib. For sure. We ain't you know, he got a little, he, his, his chop kind of fucked up a little bit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They got him low and shit, like yeah. whatever. I, I'm pretty sure that he's like snagged and then they cut him too low and then yeah. try to make it make an excuse or whatever, but you know, he on his like little poodle look or whatever. For sure, you know what man. Saying? It was a moment yeah. to see you bring it into the BT Awards, popping it on stage, man. So what yeah. was that moment like to see, you know what I'm saying? Your, everybody from your hometown, your mom, your folks watching you on TV. You know what I'm saying? What, how would you describe that moment? Yeah, it was one, that, that, those was like, it's like one of those confirmations. Like, like, yo, you are really in this motherfucker. For real. You on TV and the whole shit, like, bro, you really stepped out there and did that. And I had, and it was in my mind, I'm like, I'm gonna step out there with my dog. I'm gonna be on my robe shit. I'm gonna step out there real, real clean. Like, like I already knew, like, you know what I'm saying? I've been stepping out in robes. Even when I was doing local shows with 23 people in the crowd. Nigga, I had a big ass robe out, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Cause I knew, I'm like, nah, bro, this is my energy, you know yeah. what I'm saying? So for that to be able to be on the biggest scene, for, 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 for all black folks, you know what I'm saying? Like, what the fuck? BET for that real. Hard. And, and it was scared to death. That's why you, you <laughs> see that little looking left and right. That's crazy. Cute as a, you know what I mean? And it's so cute. I love my dog. So where did the motivation come for the weight loss, man? You're looking good out here, man. Yeah, man. Hey, yo, thank you. You know what I'm saying? Like, love it, man. Appreciate it, man. Like, so, you know, shit. I used to be bracked out. I ain't going to hold you. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I was, I was real rock star wasted all the time type time. And um, as good as I could function and things of that nature, it just, it just wasn't the way, you know what I'm saying? Like, like, like my team, like, yo, shout out to LVRN. It really was like, yo, nigga, nah, what you gonna do? What, what, what means the most to you, you know what I'm saying? And when those kind of questions get asked, knowing that, you know, I feel like God put me on earth to make music, I'm not about to fuck up any type of opportunity because I was enjoying getting fucked up too much or something mm -hmm. like that, you know what I'm saying? So, top of 2020, like January 6, 2020, like I stopped drinking, I stopped doing hard drugs, you know what I'm saying? Like, smoke the reefers, you know what I'm saying? But this is the earth, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. This is the earth, yeah. you know what I mean? This is the earth. Yeah. Like, hold on, I don't think, I don't think they seen it, I don't think they seen it. This, this is of the earth. Yeah. This, this is of the earth. Let's <laughs> show that. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? You feel me? Yeah, that's of the earth. The real one. But like, 
that, that started off, you know what I'm saying? And it felt like I didn't see that I really needed that change until I had an experience to where I was like, nah, oh, I'm bracked out for real. Let me, let me sit it on down. You know what I'm saying? Had to. During quarantine, and, it, and it's like everything happened so crazy too. Like once, like, like a good month got in or whatever, I went to rehab and everything. I ain't gonna hold you. You know what I'm saying? Like I was in that bitch for like two weeks. We stepped out and then the pandemic like started like three, four weeks later. So everything shut down. You just sitting at the crib, I'm sitting at the crib. I, I, I weighed like 260 pounds. Like I was like fattest that I ever been like, and I won't really in the scene like that. So niggas didn't really see how heavy I was low key. And I didn't think nothing of it. I'm just like, nigga, I, I was fat ever since I was 12. So yeah. I'm like, all right, I'm like, <laughs> that's my life. Yeah. And um, I started seeing niggas like doing little field workouts. You know what I'm saying? My boy, Sean, one of my managers, Sean, um, and shout out to Nolan out there in LA when I was staying out there, you know what I'm saying? He had this little group, you know what I'm saying? He was doing the workouts regardless. So when people wanted to follow, they could. I saw on Sean's story, they was running with the thing. You, you know, like the, the drills with the, mm -hmm. with the little parachutes, but not the parachute, just the weight. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, damn, I always wanted to do that. You know what I'm saying? But like, what the fuck? Yeah. So I hit him up. I'm like, yo, bro, like, what the fuck? Y'all working out without me? Da, da, da. Like, just on my funny shit. He's like, he gave me the address. Like, yo, just come tomorrow. That was April 22nd, 2020. And when I got out there, I couldn't even run a half of a lap. Like, that shit fucked me up. I, I, I like, damn, near threw up. I actually threw up out there, you know what I'm saying? And I saw people doing so good. Like, like niggas that, I'm like, yo, you, I can do this, you know what I'm saying? So I didn't let it defeat me. I just kept coming back and fucking with it and really got serious, you know what I'm saying? Me and my lady, you know what I'm saying? Like, we was out there bitch faithfully. And... Then I don't know, next thing you know, like four or five months go by and like 20, 30 pounds gone. Like I'm seeing actual results and shit, feeling like I can move and shit. And I just kept adding and shit because it feels way better, man. It's, it feels like I gave myself half a chance too. Straight you know up. Saying? I, I, I can move better than I could 10 years ago. Straight up. Proud of you, man. No, no bullshit. That's the real Th one. Thank you, man. Thank no you for shout. the pride. So let's talk about the big elephant in the room, right? The name change. What is the inspiration behind, let's go from drum to now, we're going to go to government, we're going to go to Chevy. All right, so uh, I, I touched on it a little earlier where, where it was like, felt like records like Broccoli and Cash Machine overpowered the totality of what I did. You know what I'm saying? Like, just my levels, you know what I'm saying? And then I also looked at it like, okay, so when you think of drum, you think broccoli, you think cha-cha. If you know, if you know, you know, you yeah. know, like you think those records, but you don't think Sweet Virginia Breeze, you don't think Monticello Ave, like records that I really poured my emotions into, you know what I'm saying? So I'm just like, this time coming around, I wanted to cleanse the palate. You know, I, I, I stepped back for, for, for some years, you know what I'm saying? Like I was in the cut and I'm just like, you know, this brand of music, I wanted to cleanse the palate of everything. So just straight on change, like, you know, I'm always the big baby, forever the big baby. But Shelly had to be heard this time around. And, and, and I feel like the album that came out earlier this year was, was just that, a palate cleanser. You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like I dropped the best R&B project of this year and not one that's gonna come out is gonna be better than it this year. That's me just being transparent about the situation. I feel like, it, it, you know, it, it couldn't, it couldn't be, it couldn't be big baby drama. Like, you, you know what I'm saying? Like, like this was just, just a, a elevation, uh, a, a, a more, a more grown approach, you know? But um, that was that. And as amazing it is, as it is, you know, I, I feel like it's always about re, uh, re -evol revolving, you know what I'm saying? Like, like you know, just, just continuing on. And I ain't gonna hold you. I have a record that I'm gonna attack the streets of Atlanta with a true R&B smash. 
Like, like, like that niggas ain't heard since, like, you know what I mean? Like, one of them type of vibes. Yeah. And I'm standing on all 10 when I say it. You know what I'm saying? This record is called Rated R. And I feel like it's the perfect meeting point of what the masses know me for and what they would want from me and what I want to present going on forward. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna play it for you after this motherfucker for and sure. you're gonna be like, bro, I know what you're talking about. For sure. Like, like it's, it's up, you know what I'm saying? Shout out, shout out to Waver, Waver Street Team, you know what I'm saying? Like looking at my brothers, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like like this, like, like real family shit. Yeah. We, we really out here with this shit. It's a rated R quarter four, rated R holidays, rated R Christmas. Damn. Just rate it off. Rate it off. We going up through that. Rate it off. For sure. For real. That's the real Waver. one. So where did the inspiration behind the self-titled album came from, man? Um, it just, it felt like a reintroduction. So it, it almost felt like it was the inevitable to do it. Like, you know, Big Baby Drum, that album was just called Big Baby Drum. Yeah. So it's like Shelly, you know what I'm saying? Like, like that's, that's that, you know? And no more albums being just my name. You yeah. know what I'm saying? That, that, that's, that's out. You yeah. know what I'm saying? We, we, we moving on past that. But like, it needed to happen, I feel like. For sure. Was it strategy to have all female features or was that uncoincidental? No, that, that, that was That, that was, was hard. I that peeped it, I'm like, okay. Yeah. He, know, he, he know what he doing. Yeah, he nah, ain't nah. lost it. You know what I'm saying? I, I feel like I make, I make the best collaborations with uh, women, you know what I mean? Like, uh, it's just that that connection, you know, when when we see eye to eye or ear to ear, rather, you know what I'm saying? And when we come together, no matter who, but like, yeah, For it's sure. just amazing. For sure. How was it touring with Kendrick Lamar, man? Bro, oh, that's true. That shit turned my life all the way to the maximum. Like, yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? Them habits didn't die on the tour bus, you know what I'm saying? But yeah. As far as the shows and the experience and just Kendrick even giving me that opportunity, it's just a blessing. You know what I'm saying? Like, nigga, like, especially at that time, you know what I'm saying? Like, that was needed, you know what I'm saying? Sure. And, you know, damn, that's an experience that, you know, I'll never, I'll never forget, you know what I'm saying? That was For one sure. One. And it's crazy, like we were talking about earlier, you like how everything aligned, like Tundi being your manager, mm -hmm. to being one of the presidents of LVRN, to now you are now at LVRN. So how would you describe your relationship with the label over there? Yeah, bro, it's, bro, so look, I've been with Tunde since day one, you know what I'm saying? So uh, it first started out co-managed by um, Tunde and Nigel Mack, you know what I'm saying? Then like the top of 2016, Nigel, you know, stepped down and, you know, got into other endeavors. And Tunde came to me, he was like, yo, do you want to get another co-manager? Or, you know, what's so up? I was like, bro, like, just, just take the full, you know what I'm saying? I'm fucking with you, like, that's what it's been feeling like, you know what I'm saying? We running it up. And he was like, you know, well shit, you know, um, my guys, LVRN, we'll all, you, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm gonna have this shit, you know, whatever, whatever. So it was still at that point, it was just like, just tune that. Yeah. But the inevitable, once again, like, they just elevated, elevated and turned, they shifted and morphed from a management, you know, super management group to like an actual label. Now they have, you know, publishing, like, you know, brand partnerships, all like crazy conglomerate. So it was only, you know, that that, that was, was gonna happen, just, you know, just being a part of things. Yeah. But, you know, yeah, like, like, bro, that, like, nigga, like, listen, yo, like, those are motherfucking bros, you know what I'm saying? That's the game, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And um, the, the, the greatest thing about it is like, I feel like it instilled in me uh, a drive to get my personal team, you know what I'm saying? Like, like, like a foundation within. So, you know, hands hand to hand, 
a, a, a guy told me, you know what I'm saying, years ago, one hand washed the other, they both washed the face. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's some real shit. Yeah. So it's like, you know, now, you know, I have, I have Waver, LLC, you know what I'm saying, the street team. We, we, we really out here, you know, Atlanta, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's, it's a for real thing. Rated R, that's going to be the catalyst to this whole thing, man. So, um, you know, the fact that we got, you know, LVRN and Waver, I'm saying, all, all, all together, all hands on deck. I'm saying, this, this shit going to get around. That's hard. We're here in, in, in favorite club near you. Come on, man. Y'all got to stay tuned for that. I'm excited. I can't wait to wrap this shit up. Yeah, no, no, no. So where would you say the inspiration came from for All Pride Aside featuring Summer Walker? So All Pride Aside was a record that I made six years ago in 2015. Shout out to my boy Smoko Ono, uh, the original. It, it was like, like uh, it was a whole nother like instrumental, but like, you know, uh, my guy Harmony and his team, they, they revamped it and, you know, beefed it up or whatever. It's just been like one of those ill ass songs that I just always had in the vault, you know what I'm saying? And, and it's really just like, it's all about it for me was just like, you know, stepping outside of my transparent self and dealing with things so I can get some ass. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, and then a lot of times, you know, uh, I mean, in that case in particular, because a lot of this, new, a lot of these songs are personal. A lot of these songs are about one or two or a few people merged into a, 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 a meta person. You know what I'm saying? Like, but you know, you got that appeal, you know, like, and you know, you, it's, it's like straddling the thing. You know, girl, if I do this song with you, you know, yeah, <laughs> that means I enable you. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, like, and this, this is, this is me. I ain't have a dollar to my name, but I knew, I, like, clout, clout was a real term back then, into 2014, 2015, and shit. Like, you know, and I was, I was still in the mix. I was, I was in the arts district, still in the mix. I'm like, girl, if I do this song with you, yeah, that means I enable you. You know what I mean? Like, for real, bitch. So like, yeah. like, on God. Like, you know what I'm saying? But, and then I also have to shame myself. I can never come into a situation like, 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 yo, like, I'm, I'm only going to point the finger at you. Like, you know, it's like, I'm knowing what I'm doing. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. like, you're like, you know what I'm saying? If I bought you shopping bags, you know what I'm saying? Like, I ain't had, I ain't had a dollar to my name. You know what I'm yeah. saying? I ain't, I ain't buying no, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Straight like that. Lady, you yeah. Know what I'm like, but like, just, you know, whatever, whatever. It's, I feel like all of these songs are real situational, real conversational. And that's the element that I want to keep and I feel like I am keeping since day one and moving on, moving forward. Just For real sure. conversational. For sure. So, man, Grammy nominations, multi, 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 multi platinum records. What else is we working on, man? Hey, look, Big Baby's Bakery, yeah. Big Baby's Bakery. You know what I'm saying? Uh, 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 it's, it's a lifestyle brand. How about that? Um, apparel, you know what I'm saying? Uh, baked goods, you know what I mean? Like, like events, all of these things combined into one. Like, I, I feel like it's a real good time to to speak on this shit, like, you know what I'm saying? Cause this is the quiet before the storm. You yeah. know what I'm saying? You heard it here for For sure. Heard it here. First. <laughs> One time too, man. Shout out to my girl, Marley, man. Make sure you show them minty shades hey, off, hey, man. Hey, hey, shout out Marley. Hey, That's and look, homie, I gotta man. come back for them jumps, you, you know. She putting everybody in them shits but me, man. I'm coming for mine too, man. Shout out Marley though. That's yeah, the sister, man, man. man. You know what I'm saying? Shout out Marley, shout for out sure. Fani. You know what shout saying? out Fani like, for sure. That's like, a big real, bro. Real. Real, real good folks in, sure. in, in, in my corner in Atlanta, man. For sure. Any last words or shout outs? Look, man, from me to you, I'm out here, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't bite, I am around, and I promise to God, rated R will be ringing like crazy in the city of Atlanta. Waver LLC, LVRN, peace and love, I'm fucking out. Gang.
So like you said earlier in the interview, you be real tapped into the culture and the wave. So I remember one time I was interning at this distribution company and I had seen you and Sai Baby make the dopest interaction in the hallway at Doppler Studios. Bro. Hey yo, bro, on, on the real, I was like on some shit like, bro, like, are you you type shit? So I, 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 I'm like, bro, my nigga, bro, like, 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 like when I, like, it's almost like, like my nigga, I was like, damn, yo, no fucking way, bro. I'm, I'm like, yo, nigga, I love your shit, my nigga. Yeah, yo, like, like, bro, bro, you know what I'm saying? Like, like, yo, and he like, bro, like, yeah, like, nigga, I fuck with you. He said, he said man, bro, hey, you, you, you drum, right? And I'm like, <laughs> like, yeah, bro, like, like you know what I'm saying? Bro, I ain't want because if I was wrong and that nigga won't stop, baby, I, yeah. I'd have been like, God damn, bro, what the fuck now, bro? Yeah. Nigga, like, so. The whole time, I'm so happy that you said that because, nigga, to this day, I didn't know if I met that nigga for real or not, yo. Like, 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 that's really fucking him, bro. Like, damn. No, that gotta happen. Bro. Yeah, bro, we gotta make that shit happen, Side bro. Side like, gotta like, tap in, man. Yo, nah, nah, bro. Like, like, bro, nigga. That you know what I'm saying? That. Barnacles, that, that's, that's, that's my motherfucking for shit. Sure. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I'm saying? Hunting round drum, like, that shit, that shit, you know what I'm saying? You turn it up, got that. You know what I'm saying? Put you in that motherfucking that vibe, man. For real. So damn.